So these are some of the shots, the leftover shots we found from the shoot of Wings of Desire. In the very beginning, there's a sequence with lots of different cars and their drivers. Among them, this guy who's poking his nose. And this guy is telling a joke. the camera car with the respective film cars so it's kind of difficult to stay on the same level and that's probably one of the reasons I left it out because the joke in itself was nice all these scenes were in the cut once and as we edited the film on a flatbed all the scratches you see are due to the fact that at the time the film suffered a bit and that's all I found This guy knew a lot of jokes. <laughs> this is from the very beginning when the camera is just meandering through the city and ending especially on close-ups of children. Most of them are looking up into the sky, and this is one shot we didn't use with the back of an old VW. This was a shot outside of the BMW showroom where the two angels meet. The two rock and roll musicians there, they were both in Crime and City Solution, whom you see later on, playing on stage. We had some fun with the invisibility of the angels in the very beginning. And Otto loved mimicking people. This was preceding the actual scene that is now in the cut. Obviously, Angels can get into any picture because it, they do not expose. <laughs> I mean, you can clearly see that Otto is a real clown. Should have kept this in, I think, now. We had lots of extras for this scene. On the corner of Kurfürstendamm and Bleibtreustrasse, you see one of my favorite movie theaters in Berlin in the background, the Cinema Paris.
We are very concerned with the invisibility of the angels in the beginning, and this is the shot we tried, double exposure to let Cassiel enter the showroom. This was a double exposure. This was a different way to deal with it. This was not double exposed. He's just trying to sneak in together with them. Finally, we didn't use any of it. I found in the editing room later on that I was too preoccupied or had been too preoccupied in the very beginning with all these problems of visibility or invisibility. And in the end, we didn't need any of it. I regret this scene, though. The old Kurt Bois, Homer, as he's called in the film, just studying the globe with his ever-present guardian angel, Cassiel, at his side. It was a lot of fun to shoot with Kurt. He was always ready to crack a joke. And there was no scene where he didn't somehow sneak in a little funny moment. One of his favorite tricks to snee was to sneeze all of a sudden. And he said it was necessary because he was allergic to angels. <laughs> In the background, you see the library, which is one of the main locations of the film where the angels are living, so to speak. From outside, it doesn't look like much, but inside, it's really one of the greatest buildings I know, because it's built for the pleasure of reading, and it's built from inside out. This little church there was the only building in the whole area that survived the bombing, the last bombings of the city in the in early 1945. At the time when we shot the film here on Potsdamer Platz, the only building, and it's still standing, was this house here, the Hoot House. It's still now there with lots of skyscrapers around it. And it's my orientation today to find out where everything was at the time here. The wall was going right by it. And if you go visit the Potsdamer Platz today, and if you find the Hood House, you will, you can vaguely see where we shot all this and that this was really once a total no man's land. Right here, where we're shooting these birds, is where the Sony Center is today. In the background there, you see the former Esplanade Hotel. So the two of them are standing right in the middle of the present Sony Center. The monorail in the background was a test area for this monorail. It was actually sold to China later on, years later. It was never built in Berlin, but they did build it in China.
Yeah. This is the present site of the Potsdamer Platz and uh, Mercedes-Benz buildings. And there again on the right side you see the Hoot House. It's difficult to imagine all of this from today. This wasteland. We didn't even put those chairs there, they were standing there. There are not many female angels left in the present Wings of Desire. She was one of them. I think you see her once in the library. Apart from that, she was cut out along with these Russian soldiers. Also this wall there, the wall Halle, is no longer there, of course. Again, we're in the middle of the Sodi center today. In moments like this, when I would say cut, Kurt Bar would just let himself fall so that Otto was forced to f catch him. And after a while, Otto knew he would do this all the time, but then Kurt started to do this even before, I would say, cut, or even in rehearsal. So Otto was always aware that he was totally responsible to catch Kurt Bohr at any given moment. Because Kurt said, you are my guardian angel. That's what you're here for, to catch me. Yeah, I think I shot this scene strictly because of the graffiti waiting for Godar, instead of waiting for Godot. This, by the way, is the place where, later on in the film, Damiel, played by Bruno Ganz, will have his first coffee. Hmm. Here you have the scene twice. Yeah, these people did look into the camera. That's why I didn't use it. This is a shot that we cut out of the scene with a suicide jumper.
Oh, this one, boy. Before we knew how the angels would look, we tested all sorts of wardrobe ideas, and one of them was were these armors. We didn't use them in the end, but as we had those beautiful copper things, we decided to, at least then in the end, would bring them back. And this one is the one that fell onto Daniel's head when he became a human being. And so he carries it with him to sell it for this outfit here. As this is his first day in his life, he's trying to figure out how to whistle. One of the pleasures. Angels don't know anything about whistling. This little scene got cut out. It was before the two of them meet in the Nick Cave concert. Marion and Damiel. appears in color and in black and white with Cassiel's presence obviously it turns into black and white this shot out because it was so strange that it was starting to snow for just half an hour and then the old snow was gone again it was so bizarre that there was snow in the film that I left it out this is a shot I did once 30 years earlier for my very first film summer in the city with Hans Sichler. And at the time I did it for the same reason. I did it here in Wings of Desire because in the background you see what I consider the most beautiful building in the city of Berlin, built in the 20s. Gorgeous building, the Shell House. This whole facade in waves. At the time when we shot Wings of Desire, it was completely dilapidated, and there was a danger that it was, that they were going to tear it down. So I wanted to make sure that it was on film one more time. Luckily, it's been restored ever since, and it looks more splendid than ever. But at the time when we shot this, there was a danger that it would be torn down. The scene of the circus coming down is also not in the film. You just see it gone. We shot the whole deconstruction of it, but couldn't really use it in the editing. Not only because Chico was looking into the camera here, This is another place that's just gone now. There's a whole supermarket built at this empty spot. I 
I had to announce the Nick Cave concert somehow and tried it with this shot. Both of them going into different directions, but didn't use it in the end. Nick Cave was a real Berlin hero. There's myself, a Berlin underground hero in the early 80s. He lived in Berlin at the time, and it was inconceivable for me to make a film in Berlin without showing one of his concerts. A whole gang of Australian rock and roll musicians living in Berlin. And it made sense. Somehow the climate of the city and the music that Nick was making at the time, all the bad seeds, that just was inconceivable anywhere else. This is a whole scene that we cut out. This is while Marion and Daniel meet in the bar, the very end of the film. I did have Cassiel become a human being too. He so much wanted to be human, ah, and he had fun with it. Although he didn't quite know yet how to drink beer. <laughs> but as you know, in the film, Cassiel remains an angel. And we cut out this scene here. And we also cut out the following scene. And you might be surprised what's happening. See, this is after the dialogue between Marion and Damiel. And Cassiel shows up. And if you've seen the film, you might have wondered why there's this cake standing next to this tender scene and this long dialogue between the two of them. Now you know why that cake was there, because we needed it for the first encounter between these two old friends. Mensch. face to face, so to speak, for the first time. <laughs> Ow! There you go. Now you will see. Cut. <laughs> I'm showing you the rushes here, not the cut version. So from the moment when he grabbed the cake, we would have cut to these two girls. And then, actually, you can take this and put it into your computer and edit it yourself. How do you like that? So this is a continuation of what we had before. And maybe you cut here. <laughs> For 25 years, I, I had wanted to shoot a pie fight, and I finally got to do it. Oh, pardon. But I didn't survive. <laughs> yeah, there's an extra pie. My God. <laughs> The material looks pretty abused, as you see. That's been lying on the <laughs> editing room floor. And the last pie, the one that wasn't used so far, in the end was also <laughs> used, with auto sitting right into it. The flash that you saw there was actually my DP. No, that was myself. Eh? It is not. This is Henri Alicorn. 
who walked into this shot at the end. Because he loved the scene. And and he threw another a leftover piece of pie into Sorvik's face, and Sorvik threw one into my face. You see, it was getting totally out of hand. That's what you get from shooting pie fights. <laughs> well, you can go and edit it yourself on your computer. There's a few extra shots you might want to use. Like, from the white shot, when Bruno is grabbing the cake, you can go right in here. <laughs> Just download it into your computer and use Final Cut <laughs> or whatever you have, and you can edit the scene yourself. <laughs> I've given you a few options here. Look. This was the B camera that was running at the same time. Cassiel, <laughs> my ah, that, that piece was missing. That piece, I just didn't find it again. That was in between there. That was lost forever on the cutting room floor. Ein Bier. Zwei. Drei. You must admit I was right to not put the scene into the film, right? I never know whether I seriously wanted to use it. I just know I shot it on the last day, and it was actually a good way to end the shoot and go right into the party. This is where I catch my piece of the pie. Looks like I had a third camera going. You can really, you can really do a lot with these scenes, with these shots. I mean, you might actually cut a great scene together. <laughs> I'd be happy to see a cut of this. Now, this is a second take. This is not a... Uh, this is a whole different version. Oh. This is a whole different version, yeah. <laughs> In the other one, she was pushing his head into the cake, but this is a very different version. This is the third camera, after all. What am I telling you? see, I forgot all about this. So I'd say, if you have a good cut of this, send it to me. Send it to my website. Vim wonders.com and whoever does the best cut will get a pie from me this is endless material i didn't i didn't even remember we shot all this boy 
And I must have used those in between because, I don't know, there were pieces missing. <laughs> You know what's happening now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I must admit, I'm really happy. I didn't use this scene. <laughs> oh boy, what a disaster. Herr Ober. Ah, sometimes it's good to shoot a scene like this. On your last day, when you're all finished. Herr Ober. That was a great way to begin the <laughs> rap party. <laughs> it was getting out of hand, clearly. I should have cut this shorter here. Anyway, now you know how the film could have ended and how silly directors get sometimes. <laughs> <laughs>